Hello everybody, Pastor Hans here. Hey, when I was in college, I drove a mess of a vehicle. Uh, when I was in college, I had an old Isuzu Trooper, and this thing, this thing was a hunk of junk, if I'm absolutely honest. It was old and needed work. In the winter, the heater wouldn't work. I remember, in fact, a time I was driving from Fargo, North Dakota, all the way to the Twin Cities, to Minneapolis, St. Paul. And it was the middle of winter, it was below zero, and I took, I had to have a sleeping bag, I opened the bottom of it, I crawled into the sleeping bag, and drove in the sleeping bag all the way, the three hours from Fargo, Moorhead, to the Twin Cities. I had an ice scraper, I was scraping the inside of the window. Uh, not only that, some friends thought it would be a funny joke one summer to put a dead fish in my car. So when I got into the car, it stunk. Well, I didn't drive the car for about a week and a half after they put the fish in the car, so I didn't notice. And lo and behold, when I got into the car after a week and a half of a fish being in there, it was like baked fish. It stunk. That car reeked and I never got the smell out of it. Well, I graduated from college and, and got my first job and I remember very distinctly staying at work late one night. It was a long, stressful day. Uh, my car was the only one left in the parking lot. I walked out of the office and walked all the way across to where my car was parked in the parking lot. And I reached my hand to open the door. And as I opened the door to my Isuzu Trooper, guess what happened? The door fell off. The door literally fell off the hinges. And do you know what I wanted to do to my mess of a car? I wanted to just turn around and walk away. I wanted to turn around and walk away from that mess. Friends, I hope I'm not the only one who's experienced what it's like to have a mess in your life. And sometimes all we want to do is just turn around and walk away. But here's the thing I think that's actually more common than us wanting to walk away from our own messes. I think if we're really, really honest, when we see the messes in our friends' lives, when we see the, the messes in our acquaintance, maybe family members, when we see the messes in their lives, Oh man, I don't know about you, but I have this tendency, this urge inside me to just want to walk away. When you see how they, they again and again make a mess of their finances or a mess of their marriage or a mess of their work situation, I don't know about you, but I am, I'm tempted to just want to walk away. Well, Jesus told a story to people like you and me who have this tendency to want to walk away from the messes in other people's lives. And it's probably the most famous story Jesus ever told. It's found in Luke chapter 10. In verse 30, it says, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him, and they went away, leaving him half dead. He was a mess. It says a priest happened to be going down the same road, and when that priest saw the man, he passed by on the other side of the road. So too, a Levite, a Levite was like a lay worker, an assistant to the priest. A Levite, when he came to the place and saw the man, he too passed on the other side. But then it says there was a Samaritan now, here's what you need to know about Samaritans. Jews and Samaritans, they hated one another. And so the people listening to this story, as Jesus told it, would have assumed <laughs> that Samaritan, he's going to do just the same. It says, But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him, and he went to him. And he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. When he took the man on his donkey then, he took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you, you have incurred. You see, Jesus tells that story, I think, to people like you and me who have this tendency to just want to want to just walk away from those messes that we see in people's lives. The Samaritan was the least likely character to walk towards that man who was left for dead. 
But it says that's exactly what he did. He walked toward the mess. And I think that's the invitation that God gives to people like you and me. You see, our tendency is to walk away. And here's what Jesus knows. Our isolation, when we isolate ourselves from other people and their messes, our isolation always leads to intoleration. And so what started out as avoiding people's messes eventually turns into a lack of toleration of their messes. And for those who have the messes in their lives, all alone, it leads them. Well, it leads them to be less tolerant to them, themselves. And we know when we're less tolerant of ourselves, our messes, well, our messes get messier. Friends, Jesus invites you and me to move toward the messes. Move toward the messes, just like that Samaritan. Because it's toward the messes where we can find real hope. We can find real care, real common ground. And we can find peace. Folks, thanks for tuning in today. If you're watching The Daily Dose on uh, Facebook, why don't you share this post? If you're watching it on YouTube, we'd love for you to hit the bell so you get notifications. If you're watching on Cable Access 181, tell a friend. Have a great night. See